the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BTZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. And today on the podcast, we've got a very special guest. Now, I've had him on the podcast before about his playing career, but today I'm going to talk to him about his coaching career, and I've got none other than Eric Growth Jr. on the line. How are you going, Guru? I'm good, thanks, Troy. How you doing, mate? I'm doing fantastic. Now, um, as I said, I've had you on the podcast before. It was a great chat um, and yeah. about your playing career. Now you're a coach. I just want to, before we get into the Campbelltown City Kangaroos, I just want to say, um, I just want to ask, how did you ever think whilst you were playing that you were going to become a rugby league coach? No, I definitely didn't think. I would ever be a coach. I I often wondered, like, if I'd hang around the sport and be involved in some respect or not. But I, even towards the back end, I never really would have thought that I would have done that even. Okay. But, to, yeah, to actually coach, it all kind of happened because of my partner, Laura. She was super keen to um, try football, yep. um, tackle footy, and she just asked me, can I t- go down the park with her and just show her some... Um, like the stuff that a winger would do, she was because she was going to play on the wing. She's quite fast. Okay. And um, yep. yeah, and that be, started from simply from going down, throwing the footy around with Laura and just talking about footy and to really helping her because she really wanted to learn because she she was a former track athlete um, and a professional yeah like sprinter. Okay. So she's got that kind of mentality, the opposite of me actually. She is <laughs> she's she's a uh, super professional and and just. Uh, right on the on the money with her, her body and her, you know how how she trains and it's and a nutrition it's just incredible. Anyway, she got me excited and I ended up uh, coaching because yeah. a bloke Andrew Willis who played for the Magpies okay, yeah. a very well known field goal to win uh, <laughs> quite an important game. Yeah, uh, one I, day. Yeah, at uh, Campbelltown Oval. Uh, what have been ninety six? I think it might have been. Andrew Willis, anyway, he, he was coaching the Camden Rams. Yep. I was, Laura, we live up the road. We found that they had a team and there was a spot there for us. So she went there and played footy. And I was there supporting, hanging around, helping out every now and then if he needed it, which he didn't really need it. But then um, he was leaving the next year to go away for a few months and said, mate, would you want to take the girls on for the, the season? I was like, oh, mate, thanks very much. And honored that you asked me i haven't done it before i'd love yep. to give it a shot and i gave it a shot and it was good fun and yeah this is season two so here we are i can't believe it mate to be honest my i speak to andrew ryan a little bit okay. Bobcat, yeah and he um he him and i laugh every now and then we'll be talking about footy and he just starts laughing and i'm like what are you laughing at he's just like i can't believe you of all people are coaching someone <laughs> <laughs> after some of the like times and combos and things that have happened throughout <laughs> our careers together against each other and all that stuff. It's just funny. Yeah, nah, that, that's awesome. Well, as you said, this year you're at the Campbelltown City Kangaroos. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the Kangaroos club? Yeah, mate, it's um, it's it's funny because when I played for Eagle St Andrews when I was young, like in under 10s and under 11s and 12s and 13s and blah, 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 I, um, Campbelltown City were like our arch nemesis. They okay. were a, a really tough team. Um, and then, yeah, years later, um, I just started ringing around, finding out about Eagle Vale St Andrews. If they had a women's team, I learned that they didn't. Um, and I had a chat to Robbie Melville, who my dad had coached oh, wow. um, at SG Ball for West. Okay. And Robbie Melville is uh, yeah pretty uh, connected there at the Campbelltown City Roos. His brothers are all on the boards and, and the you know the, the the big dogs, yep. so to speak. And um, 
they, they rang me and just said, mate, you know, we'd love to have you over here, get a little vibe going, pump the energy up and, yeah, just have some fresh ideas. And, mate, so far they've been amazing and they're very accommodating and they really help me because it's only my second year too, so I'm learning. But they're just, yeah, they're just there for you. They, they, they supply the girls with everything they need and, mate, it's a good, great little club. It's a very, very um, blue-collar, very grassroots club, but... It's um, a very proud one. They've been around since 1908, the first year of, of rugby league itself. So yeah, it's um, quite a feat to, to have a club that's been around that long and to still be, be going every season. It's, it's, it's awesome. And they've certainly had some notable players uh, in the men's game over the past, uh, Tim Sheens and Frankie Pritchard and uh, one that was in the news yesterday, David Nofaluma. Um, yeah. Uh, that have played at the club, but uh, that's the men's side. But let's get, let's get to your uh, your team, the Open Women's team. Um, now, um, wh- when does your competition start? So uh, the round one is March seventeenth or eighteenth. It's on the Sunday, whatever the Sunday is. I think that's the seventeenth, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we've got trial matches before then. But yeah, that, that'll be the first round, and then it only it's only a I think. Uh, how many how many weeks is the it's like all up including the grand final it's like 12 weeks okay um so it's a very short sharp competition so last year the competition was trying they were trying to mirror the men's competition and for that reason and there only being so many sides and a couple of sides were forfeiting a lot against some of the tougher teams it was uh dragged out to nine and a half months oh wow yeah yeah it was horrible it was like a pregnancy the girls reckon <laughs> and, and they they uh it was just horrible and they um it, it just it was so stop start it was really hard to know when they like fire the girls up and get them all pumped and full of energy and then it, and and to pull back and just to let them relax because there's no games for the next three weeks because so-and-so is going to forfeit it's rained out this weekend okay. yeah. and then blah 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 whatever you know so um, no, no, but uh, mate, they've they've smartened up and they've made it a shorter, sharper comp. So it's going to be a real tough, tough, um, tough comp this season, definitely. How's preseason training going? Yeah, good. Everyone's pretty into it so far, and they're yeah, ripping into it. It's been quite hot. We train at Fullwood Reserve, which is out at the back of Claymore. There, there's all new development going in and around there. They've knocked down everything there. It's all brand new again. So it's um it's looking good, the place, and it will look even better eventually. And they've actually the ruse have been. Um, we've got a grant, and okay. they're they're doing up a big stadium at that forward there. So it's going to be, you know, proper proper sporting facilities are up to the up to the stand industry standard. So um, that's over the next couple of years that'll be getting built. So that, that that's good times for them. Yeah, definitely for sure. Who are who are some of your players that we should keep an eye out for? Yeah, well, um, I'm not being biased, but I'll say <laughs> my partner Laura Whale. I think because. She she was a leading try scorer last year in her second okay. year of rugby league altogether. Yeah, wow. um, leading try scorer and she didn't even play the last five or so games. So she was uh, that was amazing of her and two other girls in Camden to get equal leading try scorers for the season. So I'll say her, Laura Whaler. I'll also say uh, Katrina Fippen. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, she's she's uh, one to watch. She's um, a fullback. She played for Minto Cobras last season. And I'll tell you what, she just has a real knack for finding the try line. And also, she can save a try too. If it wasn't for her, um, the scores could have got a little bit ugly there at times. So she's um, she's an amazing one to watch. There's another one. Uh, and and that, like n- not so much my partner, Laura, but Katrina, she's knocking on the... And others, they're knocking on the door of Harvey Norman. Okay. And, and, yep. and it's with Harvey, uh, with clubs now, training um, with Harvey Norman squads as well. So... They're all very close to breaking into that next thing. So the Group 6 is actually a bit of a launch pad for them because a lot of scouts keep a close eye. It's a very tough competition for the girls. So yeah. there's a lot of good footy, especially in the top three or four teams. When they battle it out, it's, it's good footy. So there's a lot of talent there and, and un, un, um, unsigned talent, so to speak. So there's, um, there's a lot of interest in, in, the, in the comp and then it's getting more so, especially this season coming. Oh, that's that's great news. Um, yeah, definitely the women's game is definitely growing and growing and growing. Um, it's funny that you mentioned Katrina because one of your, uh, you and your dad's biggest fans. Uh, I should mention also too that you're co-coaching with your dad. How's that going? Yeah, yeah, co-coaching with dad. Yeah, it's awesome. It's um, 
it's it's great having Dad along. Just he's got this real, as everyone probably who, who meets him or has met him knows, he's got this kind of cool, calm and collected uh, aura and energy around the place. So yep. he, he he's very easy to have around, and his wisdom and one-liners and his dry kind of no-nonsense philosophies on rugby league. Uh, yeah, something I didn't we didn't really talk about footy much uh, growing up because it was just always around and it was in our family, so we didn't really think to talk about it like say someone who was supporting the game not playing it at that level like might do okay. um so it yeah. wasn't it wasn't really yeah a topic of conversation for us but yeah mate he to have him around um and just to yeah just looking across and your dad's there helping with the, with your team's drills and that's pretty special definitely oh yeah for sure I was definitely a, a legend of the game and in blue sure. and gold too yeah? so that's right it's so it's, it's uh the old colors it, and stuff yeah 100 percent blue and gold gonna be uh my team for sure uh, but as i was saying uh one of your biggest fans and your dad's biggest fans is nicola and marlon weber and they've given me a uh a, a listener question i suppose you could say it um yeah not only have they sponsored your partner, Laura, as well, um, taken out a, a player sponsorship, which we'll just get into after this, but um, he wanted to ask, and they wanted to ask you, you mentioned Harvey Norman before. Is there any interest in going in a higher level into the Harvey Norman level once the Group 6 concludes or if an offer came along? For for myself to coach, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, mate, I... I enjoy it, so I'm. I don't really know. I haven't really thought beyond um, really, yeah, doing what I'm doing. I've thrown my hat in the ring to a few places a few times, knowing that I more than likely wouldn't okay. get much of a bite. Um, but yeah, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I haven't really sat and thought. Oh, geez, I'd like to be a full time coach or anything like that. No, okay. Nothing on that level. I'm talking like, you know, we, we train two nights a week and play on a Sunday, so it's not like. Yeah, a full-on schedule like like a first grade rugby league coach would, would be. But mate, definitely, it's interesting. Like I, I went and watched the um, Cronulla Sharks training session, and it was unbelievable just to watch um, Craig Fitzgibbon how he had the respect of his players, and every word he said was was listened to very closely and obeyed, yep. and 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 for all the right reasons, not for you know, any reasons of wanting to to be the boss of people. It was just that. He just has, has looked at things and, and been around such brilliant minds himself that when he speaks, people shut up and listen. And watching the team react and watching their drills, it was really cool. And uh, to you know to watch a current team train at a, a, a top tier team. So I took a lot of that stuff that I learned even just on that one day into some of the stuff I uh, do with the girls in the. In the uh, at the City Roos. And what about uh, maybe some of your former coaches? Have you taken a little bit of those? Yeah, uh, what, mate, what everything. You've there? Everything, pretty much, mate, to be honest. like oh, Because when I sat and thought about it not long ago, someone asked me about the coaches I'd had, and I'd, I'd never really sat and lined them all up. But when I think about it, my first coach, like I had experience in Jersey, uh, Harold Matthews with like Daniel Anderson. Yep. Um, and then later I had Brian Smith pretty much straight away when I came into professional after not playing for a few years, straight into Brian Smith. And then um, well, Shane Flanagan was a reserve grade coach, so whenever I was playing there, he was a reserve grade coach. On top of that, um, when Brian Smith left, Jason Taylor came in, so I had Jason Taylor for a little bit. Yep. Then Michael Hagan. Um, uh, oh, in between there, sorry, when I went to the Roosters, I had Graham Murray, Ricky Stewart. Yeah. Um, yeah, Michael Hagen. Um, uh, who else was there? And then back, um, back to Daniel Anderson in 09. Back to Daniel Anderson and Steve Kearney. Um, and, mate, from all of that, oh, I experienced uh, Wayne Bennett's coaching for, for um, six weeks in, uh, for the Tri-Nations. Yeah. So all those little bits and pieces that I experienced through, like, being a player under those blokes, mate, I pretty much have just copied everything and put my own little personality on how I deliver the message or the yeah the drill that we're doing to, to get the girls to perform it. So okay. yeah. it's all the basics. Basically, it's pretty much everything Brian Smith taught us, really. Yeah. Like, if I'm not, you know, talking, you know, shit, it's, it's pretty much everything he taught us because he just looked at the game differently to a lot of people at that time. 
Um, he was a bit ahead of his time in that he looked at it a bit like the NFL looked at their their sport um, and broke it down into a bit of a, a science. And just some of the things that he taught us, very basic things a lot of the times too, but very what, like those kind of those awakening moments where you're like, oh, yeah, okay. it's, no one's ever just said it that simply. So he's yeah. very good at getting the message across. So I'm very, very big on get, making sure that before I say what I need to say to the girls, I just get all the bull crap out of the way and deliver it nice, short, sharp and punchy to them because we only get an hour and a half twice a week. Yep. They don't want to be listening to me trying to explain this crap. They just want to get going, you know. Yeah, so, that's, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I take a lot of Smithy's kind of, yeah, presentation style out of out of what he, he taught me and obviously all those amazing skills that he awoke us up to. <laughs> yeah, nah, uh, certainly yeah, a long list of great coaches there. Uh, yeah. Now, I mentioned uh, Nick and uh, Marlon have taken a player sponsorship for your partner, Laura. Um, yep. How can other listeners uh, get involved in, in sponsorships and help out a grassroots club? Yeah, easy. Just contact the club and tell them you want to do a player sponsorship. And it's usually, you know, it's not much more than $500-odd for your business to have your branding uh, and your business name shared around. And we've put a big emphasis with the girls this year for, for sponsorship that they're going to post and tag um, the, the, the sponsors okay. who come on board their, their, their social media accounts and, and, and make an effort to make sure that the sponsor's happy with, you know, th- th- they get their bang for their buck. So yep. we will really want to make sure because this club, they want to they wanna kind of have a fresh bit of a fresh slate, slate and just – you know have a have a new kind of yeah new new vibe around the place and kind of um just just start from scratch type thing okay and and um and they're happy to accommodate um sponsors in any kind of way and we're thinking of more different unique ways that we can get people's brands and businesses out there with you know sausage sizzles in marquees i have a marquee high company and we can provide a marquee all they need is a bit of their branding come and have a sausage sizzle at our game okay. and all the locals that yep. come to our game we're surrounded by suburbia like as far as you can see around you is is um all houses so there's plenty of humans coming down there and plenty of eyeballs <laughs> for your brand and your local business so yeah it's all good mate so there's player sponsorships and is there like club sponsorships and like yeah yeah and there's sponsorship. like specific like the women are getting their own specific sponsors for their gear and their winter stuff and like a company might want to you know sponsor say a two and a half thousand dollar package which would be like that decks the girls out in all hooded track suits and it gets the you know kangaroos plus your branding on the back yep. right across the back something like that like i'm just i'm just making stuff up here you know but um yeah things like that it's um coaches yeah, sponsor open, open, as well coaches yeah no worries it's going the back pocket that don't worry about that <laughs> no yeah no mate we um we're just um we're just happy to be hanging out together and doing something and you know the girls are getting the buzz out of um having regular training and and um yeah, just just learning stuff and, and whatever. So ah, that's great. Well, we'll put the club details in the in the notes, and then um, we'll also mention that if anyone wants to contact the club, they can get interested in sponsorship. And um, yeah, thanks, man. Mate. Yeah, 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 no, not a yeah, problem. If, look, if the podcast was doing a little bit better, I'd even uh, chuck in a sponsorship as well because it's blue and oh, gold. No, the that's team's, right, the team's blue long. and gold, and, and yeah, what, yeah, the no. logo is blue and gold as well. So it'd that's work in well, well, but uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe you can expand your podcast to cover all blue and gold teams everywhere across the world. Then you'll get even more. <laughs> yeah, very well, maybe. Well. Eric Growth Jr., Guru, thank you very much for joining me for this short little chat um, about no worries, the Campbelltown City Kangaroos and your open women's team and uh, sponsorship as well. Uh, we'll check in uh, maybe uh, a little bit later on in the year, see how you're going. And, yeah. um, look, we wish you all Any the best time, um, for that first game and your trial games coming up. And yeah, we've got some trials, mate. Um, can you uh, let me know, tell me what you think? Why, how are the Eels going to go for 2024? How the Eels are going to go? Well, look, um, after last year. on. Yeah, that's it. After last year, I think the final, the top eight is definitely the goal. Um, 
and anything above that is anything above eighth position is a bonus i think um but i think the good thing is they don't have a lot of changes to their team so yeah that's good yeah yeah so i i hope that the disappointment of last year will fire them up to go better in 24 and um who knows i mean because they made the grand final in 22 and uh, yeah. dismal year last year, a lot of injuries and suspensions, but that's not an excuse. But um, yeah, hopefully the disappointment can spur them on and uh, go a lot better. Anyone who's who's someone to watch, you think, for the Eels this year? Um, look, I, I don't know. I think probably Brendan Hands. I think um, yep. the hooker. Um, I think maybe he had um, uh, he had a good season last year. Um, yep. How old is he? Uh, I'd say he'd be uh, young twenties, I think. Yeah, uh, early, early twenties. Yeah. Yeah. So he's still, he's still like he, some some players like just develop a little bit later. Like they they get used to it over a couple of years, two three years, and they become really strong in the mid kind of you know in their mid career. Yeah, um, yeah, and better sure. as some of them age better and get better and better as they go on. So that's it. Might th- be one of that. I, I think also, uh, obviously, Jermaine Hopgood as well. He he can have another a breakout year. I think it was his first full year <laughs> of first grade football coming from Penrith. So yeah, um, I think he can have another great year, um, and I think maybe push for Queensland Origin selection. Yeah, um, that'd be good. Yeah, for sure. And um, look, I think you'll get the the usual from uh, Clint Gutherson and, and Mitchell Moses. I think as well yep. during the yeah, year. Yeah, they're always ripping in, aren't they? they I saw uh, there was something on their social media somewhere um, of them sprint having a sprint <laughs> race, and it was in slow motion. It had some cool music behind it. It was cool, and I didn't realise like. I, I met actually. I bumped into uh, my partner. She's kind of somehow friends of friends of friends with. Gutherson's uncle in Nelson Bay or something like that. Okay. I don't know if I've got that exactly right. But anyway, he was a massive dude, man. Yeah. And I was thinking, far out, that's a Gutherson. And you could tell too, he looked like he looked like Gutho. Yeah. Looks. And um I just thought, geez, Gutho's probably a big dude. Like he's actually probably a big human, like that compared to what he he doesn't look like a massive guy on camera. No. But then I saw him sprinting next to Mitchell Moses, and I know Mo- Mitchell isn't like the biggest guy in the world, but he um you know, he's not tiny. No. Um, but but Gutho, he looked really big, and and his freaking legs when he was sprinting, he had these monstrous bloody legs on him. He, he's a he's a bit of a beast, the big fella. Yeah, well, he came back from the he suffered the knee injury in the last game yeah. last year, so he's he's slowly coming back, to, and um, a lot of people are commenting. He can keep his pace. He's got a bit of that X factor about him, doesn't he? He just can make a kind of make something out of nothing. He can get the ball, and everything's quiet, and then explode, change of pace and burst through and he and he's just bolting in space all of a sudden a lot of the time. It's quite quite good to watch him. Yeah, definitely. That last game at, at Penrith last year he was uh on fire. It was probably one of his best games all year and uh yeah, as you said, he could throw a ball, he could burst through a gap and um yeah, he was certainly doing a real footballer, yeah, real good attacking footballer, oh, isn't he? A great club man too. He's pretty much the heart and soul I think of of Parramatta um, he yeah, never lo- really never wants to lose a game. Him. Yeah, no, he's he definitely he's one of those guys, mate. That from from start to finish, he's competing the whole time. That's it. That's it. Well, Eric Grove Junior, thank you very much for jumping on, on the mate. podcast today, and we'll chat Take soon. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, All right, mate. Troy. Thanks, Chairman. See you. Bye. Guys. for listening to another episode of the Paracade Podcast. See you next time.